All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Structure Free Chica Chica Learning. In this video, we're going to learn how to calculate the resultant moment of a force or forces. The moment is the turning effect caused by a force. The magnitude of a moment is force times the distance. And D is the perpendicular distance from the force's line of action to the rotation axis. All right, let's take a popular case of wrenches and bolts. You've probably heard of lefty loosey, righty tighty. And really what we're saying is, hey, which way do I turn the bolt to loosen it? And which way do I turn it to tighten the bolt? What this means is turn it to the left or counterclockwise or turn it to the right to tighten it, which is really clockwise. And so if I want to loosen this bolt, I want to turn the bolt in the counterclockwise direction. And in order for me to make that turning effect, I've got to apply a force this way and it will cause the bolt to turn about this axis of rotation call this point O. And if I want to calculate the magnitude of that turning effect, this is going to be equal to the magnitude of the force and the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to this point O. This is a 90 degree angle. And this is the magnitude of the turning effect. Boom. You'll notice here that the moment that we're talking about has a magnitude and a direction, clockwise, counterclockwise in a 2D world. So that means because it has a magnitude and direction, a moment is a vector. The direction of a moment follows a right-hand rule convention. If I'm unscrewing or loosening the screw, I'm turning in this counterclockwise direction. And the way that I would represent this with my right hand is I would curl my fingers in the direction of the rotation and my thumb would represent the direction of the moment vector. And I take this representation as a double-headed arrow, and I would point that double-headed arrow as the same direction as my thumb. This would represent a curl or rotation in this direction, and vice versa. I'm turning the other way. I'm going to point my double-headed arrow down, and I would be talking about a curl that goes in this direction. So in rectangular components, in 3D, I would use my X, Y, Z reference, and positive moments would be double-headed arrows pointing in the positive X, positive Y, and positive Z. And if I point my thumb in the positive X direction and I curl my fingers, that would be the direction of the turning effect or the rotation. And the same goes for in the Y and Z direction. So a positive Y moment would be a thumb pointing in the Y direction, and that would be a turning effect like this. And in the Z, thumb in the Z direction, and it would be a turning effect like this. We have a lot of problems in statics that can be solved in 2D, and that's special because forces are only applied on the XY plane, and so they can only cause a rotating effect about the Z axis. In a 2D reference system, the Z axis is sticking out of the page, so we call a positive moment in 2D as if the thumb is sticking out of the page and my fingers are curling counterclockwise as positive moments. And so it's often said that a positive moment in 2D are counterclockwise and negative moments are clockwise. One of the first types of problems you got to solve in statics is calculating the resultant moment, which is a total effect of all the moments acting about a point. And the way we write it is m sub r, which would be the resultant moment, is the sum of all the moments acting about a point and Really, that becomes a sum of all the force times distances that are present. So, for example, we have a point O, and I've got three forces acting around point O. I've got one force that's acting straight up. The perpendicular distance to that force is two meters. I've got a second force, two kilonewtons. Here's that line of action, and the perpendicular distance is 2.5 meters. Got one more force of four kilonewtons, and the perpendicular distance is 1.5 meters. 
Now I'd like to find the total resultant moment effect about point O and anything that's causing a turning effect going counterclockwise, I'm going to consider positive. And I'm going to sum up all of these moments, which is really the sum of all the forces times their perpendicular distance. This is F1 causes a counterclockwise turning effect about O. So I have a positive moment, five kilonewtons times two meters. F2 causes a clockwise effect about point O. So that's a negative moment, negative two kilonewtons times 2.5 meters. And then F3 causes a counterclockwise effect about O. So that's going to be positive four kilonewtons times 1.5 meters. And that's going to give me positive 11 kilonewton meters, which is 11 kilonewton meters counterclockwise. All right, not bad. So let's try another problem here. Now, usually in these 2D problems, you have a four but you're not given the perpendicular distance. Here, I've got this tower sticking out of the ground. I have this 100 kilonewton force applied at an angle of 60 degrees from that vertical line. And I want to know what's the resultant moment about point A. Now, there's two ways to go about a problem like this. The first way is to first draw the line of action of the force and then draw a line that's perpendicular from that line of action to the point where you want to take moments about using geometry, I'm going to calculate that distance D. And I can see already that there's this right triangle. And so to get D, I already know that this is three meters from sine of 60 degrees. I have opposite over hypotenuse is D over three meters. And that's going to make D three meters times the sine of 60 degrees. And this is two point six meters, knowing that distance D, I can calculate the resultant moment about A. I'm going to use my 2D sign convention. So anything going counterclockwise is considered positive. I've only got one force and one distance. So this is going to just be 100 kilonewtons times 2.6 meters. And it's causing a clockwise effect about point A. So this is going to be a negative moment negative 260 kilonewton meters, which is the same as saying 260 kilonewton meters going clockwise. While the geometry isn't really complicated for this problem, usually in statics, the way that students get tripped up is with really complex geometry. And so another way to solve this exact same problem is to break up the force first into X and Y components. You would take this 100 kilonewton force and break it up into horizontal and vertical components acting at that same point on the structure. Here would be the horizontal component, and then there's going to be a vertical component. Now, the horizontal component will have a magnitude of 100 kilonewtons sine of 60 degrees, and the vertical component will have a magnitude of 100 kilonewtons cosine of 60 degrees. And now, with these two force components, I'm going to draw the line of action of each force. Then I'm going to calculate the resultant moment about point A. Any turning effect that's in the counterclockwise direction, I'm going to consider positive. And so I'm going to go one force at a time. So first I'll deal with the 100 kilonewton sine 60. The distance from A to that line of action is three meters and it's causing a clockwise effect about point A. And so this is going to be a negative moment. I look at the 100 kilonewton cosine 60, and I notice that the line of action goes through point A. That means the perpendicular distance is zero. It doesn't cause any moment about A. And so what MRA is negative 260 kilonewton meters, which is 260 kilonewton meters going clockwise. All right, so let's try another problem with a little bit more complicated geometry. I've got this kind of shade sticking out of a wall or something that has forces applied. And I want to know what's the resultant moment about O. And so I've got these forces. It's not easy to see what this perpendicular distance is right away. Um, it looks like the geometry might be a little bit more complicated than I want it to be. So what I'm going to do is just break up all the forces into components first. So there's going to be an F, the horizontal component of F1, which I'll call F1X. And then there's
there's going to be an F1Y. And this F1X is 300 newtons sine of 30. And F1Y is 300 newtons cosine of 30. Then F2, this is F2X, which is it's using a 3, 4, 5 ratio. So that the horizontal component is going to be 3 fifths of 200 newtons. And the vertical component, F2Y, is 4 fifths times 200. One little nuance you'll notice is that, you know, the F1 vector, the head was touching the structure. And so I drew all my components with the head touching the structure. And with the F2 vector, the tail was touching the structure. And I drew all the components with the tails touching the structure. So now that I have all of the, the forces broken up into components, I'm just going to draw the line of action one at a time. So I know already, like if I look at the horizontal forces, F1X and F2X, they have the same line of action. And the perpendicular distance to that line of action is this right here. I can see a right triangle that leg, that distance D to the line of action is going to be 0.5 times the sine of 45. Similarly, I can draw the line of action for F1Y and that perpendicular distance to 0.0 and that distance is 0.5 cosine of 45 degrees. And then I can do the same with F2Y and this distance 2.0 and that is 0.5 cosine of 45 plus the 0.3 meters. And now that I have all the forces and distances, sum up the moment contributions of each. Again, I'm using a 2D right hand rule. Any moments going counterclockwise, I'm considering positive. I'm gonna sum up all these moments and I'm gonna go one component at a time. So F1X times 0.5 meters sine of 45. And this F1X is causing a clockwise effect about O, so that's gonna be a negative moment. Now I look at F1Y, its arm or distance 2.0 is 0.5 meters times cosine of 45. And that's also causing a clockwise effect. So that's going to be a negative. And now I'm looking at the components or the F2. And so here F2X is 3 fifths, 200 newtons. Its arm is 0.5 meters times sine of 45. And it's also causing a clockwise effect, so it's also negative. And then F2Y is 4 fifths, 200 newtons. Its arm is 0.5 meters cosine of 45 plus 0.3 meters. And that is causing a counterclockwise effect about 0.0, so that's positive. And now when I add all that up, the resultant moment about O is negative 82.8 Newton meters, which is 82.8 Newton meters going clockwise. All right, hopefully this gave you a good introduction to the resultant moment. If you have any questions, let me know. Take it easy, structure free.